Morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Uh, There's just a few of us here today. I just, oh, okay. I thought it was me. I bought that last button and then I disappeared. <laughs> kind of like my belly. Anyways, it's, it's wonderful to hear Indira playing that and Imani. Isn't it? Yeah. They haven't been playing very long, and look at that. I mean, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. All right, well, I have titled this little talk, The Fear Of. Right? And Elder Donovan just read the scripture. Psalm 34 and 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Are you comfortable with the word fear? Some people aren't. Some people aren't. But the Bible also says, to whom you serve, you are a slave. To one or the other, you are not your own, right? You're bought with a price. People are not comfortable with that word either. But I want to challenge you to think about that a little bit today. Okay? Um, let's turn to Psalm 34. And you know, it's funny, and people, it is the book of Psalms, but they are Psalm 34. You understand that, right? Because nobody ever really gets that right. Anyhow, I want to turn to Psalm 33. There. And beginning in verse 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap, and a heap he layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. That's pretty powerful, huh? I mean, there is uh, nobody or anything like God. So, did you have a healthy fear of your parents when you were growing up? Is fear such a terrible thing? I mean, God is good. He's holy. He's righteous. Okay? But he's not safe. You understand what I mean? Do you, do you get that? His holiness is beyond our reckoning. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? If he was to show himself to us today, we would probably cease to exist. That's what I'm talking about. And there is so many texts in the Bible where we could go fear, all fear the Lord, blah, blah, all over, right? I'm not going to drag you through all that. I want to tell you a story, a quick little story about what happened to me. Because I'm not a very good person. I really am not. You know, I, I, I'm going into Publix the other day, and there's this gal pushing the cart, and she's got her suitcases in the cart, and I'm like, oh, here it comes. And I see the other guy, and I know that walks around. I don't even know his name, that I should. I should be ashamed that I don't, but I just think of him as the old drunk, okay? So... As this woman's pushing the cart to me, I says, oh, here it comes. So sure enough, she says, hey, have you got a couple dollars? And I said, 
just a couple dollars? She said, yeah, I'd like to get something to eat. I said, just a couple dollars? She said, yep. I said, okay. So I peeled off two one dollar bills, gave it to her. Now if she'd asked me for 20, I'd give her 20. But she didn't ask for 20. The Bible says what? You have not because you ask not? Now, I didn't know it was going to come from both of them or what. So then I went into Publix and I got what I had to get. And I come out. And I'm walking by and I'm thinking the old drunk's going to ask me for money now. But you know what he said to me? You know what he said to me? He says, hey man. He says, I want to thank you for helping her out. He says, I do it whenever I can. Who? Who? Who was the better Christian? Hello? I felt about this tall. And I tell you what, I never looked down on the man. Let me say, say it to you that way. I mean, but now I look up to him. You follow what I'm saying? That guy's the real deal. Maybe I don't know what brought him there, what got him in this position. But you know, who in the world are we to judge? There's a lot bigger picture here, and God sees it all. Amen. You know, that's why one day, you know, you, you, angels are up there in heaven recording things. And God said, this guy's been a terrible disaster his whole life, right? Just rotten, good for nothing. And he cries out to the Lord in himself, and nobody else hears anything. And God says to the angel, write his name. And the angel goes, huh? Listen, God knows everything. Amen. We don't know anything. Nothing is ever what it seems. I mean, look what's going on in the world today. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's just nuts. But do you have a problem with fearing the Lord? Really? Is that a big deal? I mean, you may interpret the word one way and somebody else may interpret the word another way. I really don't have a problem with it. I know that I hate seeing my dad the way he is. It tears me up. I try to see him every day. And um, yeah, I can remember twice for sure that he spanked me. Once wasn't even my fault, but the other time I certainly deserved it. Um, but he never really had to do that. I mean, my father—I don't want to get into it all—but he was the real Rambo. Okay, he could speak in such a way that I'm his son. Okay, I know he's not going to kill me, but the hair on the back of my neck would stand up. From his voice. Is that a healthy fear of your dad? I mean, we're talking about somebody who's actually taken people's lives, but I was never concerned that he was going to take my life. But I was very concerned with him not being pleased. And when he spoke to me in that voice, yeah, I had some fear. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think some of, that, some of the children today could use some of that, that kind of fear. It may be a little bit better place. Anyhow. You know, um, Deborah had, did the sermon last week and she had, a, you know, she went through a Bible study that we have in the... Anyways, there was a picture of a little boy hiding behind a leaf, right? Mm -hmm. And he figured because he can't see his eyes, you can't see me, right? But who are we as adults when we, and we have to do this, to sin, we have to turn our back on God and then sin. And we think, we're getting away with something? We think God can't see us? And furthermore, how about me? 
this drunk guy, this guy I call the drunk. Now, who, who am I? Not for God, I, 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 that's me, right? So who am I to look down on this guy? Maybe I should try to help my brother. This screwed up world we live in. This whole place is just a disaster. I, I mean, I don't, there's nothing good here. This is a, this is a bad dream. I don't know about y'all. I, I don't know how good y'all are, but before I even get out of bed in the morning, I want something wrong. I want something fattening. I want a lot of things that I shouldn't be having. So, what about a healthy fear of not wanting to displease our Heavenly Father with the thought of knowing His holiness? It, it, if God thinks something, it is. Don't you want God to have good thoughts about you? Because if he has a bad one about you, he speaks and it is. Right? He is so patient. Are you kidding me? Look around you, brothers and sisters. Look in the mirror. Is God patient or what? But even God who is patient beyond understanding has limits and time is running out for the world. And I think as a church, we ought to wake up. And I'm not talking to just you, I'm talking to me. I need to wake up. If we go to Proverbs, not well, you don't even need to. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? Proverbs 9:10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So there, there's a verse that says fear is a good thing, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do you want wisdom? I would hope so. So this is saying, if I'm reading this verse right, unless somebody can correct me, the fear of the Lord opens the door, is another way to say it, right? To begin to become wise. Amen. Amen. So if, if I'm not fearing the Lord, there's no hope. I, I'm, how am I going to get wise? If there's one thing I have learned... It's a lot easier to get older than it is to get wiser. Really don't have to do anything to get older, but just breathe, right? But to get wiser, it costs you something, doesn't it? And something that doesn't happen very much anymore is actual thinking. Think about that for a moment. People that would really think for themselves. Instead of being spoon fed everything. Well, I don't know what to think about that until I talk to so and so and see what he thinks. Hello? Do you have a mind of your own? Take it before God. Open the door of wisdom. I mean, we're in trouble. We, we really are. Because we're... The, the whole world's kind of just copacetic, right? It's all good. It's all good. I want to read you something that I read this morning. Um, take me just a second to find it, and... Uh, Okay, I think I got it. The Constitution of the United States had, made, had been made under the dominion of the Newtonian theory. Okay? You 
follow me? You're all there? You have only to read the papers of the Federalists to see the fact written on every page. They speak of checks and balances of the Constitution and use to express their idea the smile of the organization of the universe particularly the solar system, and how by the attraction of gravitation, the various parts are held in their orbits. And then they proceed to represent Congress, the judiciary, and the president as a sort of imitation of the solar system. They were only following the English Whigs who gave Great Britain its modern constitution. Not that those Englishmen analyzed the matter or had any theory about it. Englishmen cared little for theories. It was a Frenchman, Montesquieu, who pointed out, who pointed out to them how faithful they had copied Newton's theory. If you think about that for a minute, how far have we devolved? And, and, and we, we think we're so much smarter than our brothers and sisters. I mean, you, you just take the spirit of prophecy and the things that she wrote. I still have to look those words up. And, and you, you have these people that want to come against the spirit of prophecy because, well, that's plagiarism, right? Well, you know what? To me, in my thought, if somebody's going to take all this stuff from other people, which was not against the law at this time, at that time, right? And know exactly what to take and what to leave alone. That's more evidence to me, hands down, that that truly is the spirit of prophecy. Why reinvent the wheel if it's already done? Amen. Hello? How would she know, with a third grade education, what was right and what was wrong? Hello? <laughs> what if we had truly the fear of separation? Maybe we think of it that way. Instead of the fear that our Heavenly Father would kill us, which I don't think any of us do, the fear of separation. Amen. The fear of the look upon his face that he's displeased with us. What if you were so tender that you sought out the smile of God in everything that you did and just the thought, just the thought of him frowning terrified you? How do you think that would change your life? Think about it. You know, I watch things that I know people that are much further along than me and their journey and their relationship with God that they would probably be sick to their stomach if they saw things like that. I'm talking just maybe violence, which I kind of like. I shouldn't. But I like boxing and kickboxing and all that stuff. Do you think God cares for that? Probably not. Probably not. Let us turn to Matthew. Now, I want to turn to Matthew 9 and 16. Let's just go there first. 
When you're there, let me know. Amen. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and rent, and the rent is made worse. Huh? And it's made worse. Why is that? People know anything about garments? Shrinkage. Shrinkage. I want to read you a little something. There are times before us that will try the souls of men. And there will be need of watchfulness, of the right kind of fasting. This will not be like the fasting of the Pharisees. Their seasons of fasting were occasions of outward ceremony. They did not humble their hearts before God. They were filled with bitterness, envy, malice, strife, selfishness, and self-righteousness. While their heads were bowed in pretended humiliation, they were covetous, full of self-esteem, self-importance. They were oppressive, exacting, proud in spirit. Everything in the Jewish service had been misinterpreted and misapplied. Did you hear that? This was who? God's people. Everything had been misinterpreted and misapplied. The purpose of the sacrificial offerings had been perverted. They were to symbolize Christ and his mission that when he should come in the flesh, the world might recognize God in him and accept him as the world's redeemer. But their lack of the true heart service for God had blinded the Jews to a knowledge of God. Exactions and ceremonies and traditions were the sum total of their religion. Did you hear that? I'm going to read that one more time. Exactions and ceremonies and traditions were the sum total of their religion. Think about this. Someone had to come and God had declared in the garden that that his son would come, right? And give his life as a ransom for the human race. But it did it have to be the way it was? He's the Lamb of God. How did they take the life of the Lamb? It wasn't by whipping them, right? Hanging them on a cross, sticking night, you know, spikes through them. Mm. Okay. Matthew nine and seventeen. What does that say? Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Hello? Do you hear it? I'm going to read you a little something else. New bottles for new wine. The work of Jesus was to reveal the character of the Father and to unfold the truth which he himself had spoken through prophets and apostles. But there was found no place for the truth in those wise and prudent men. Do you hear that? Christ, the way, the truth, and the life had to pass by self-righteous Pharisees and take his disciples from unlearned fishers of men, fishers, and men of humble ranks, those who had never been to the rabbis, who had never sat in the schools of the prophets, who had not been members of the Sanhedrin, whose hearts were not bound about with their own ideas. Do you hear that? 
These he took and educated for his own use. He could make them as new bottles for the new wine of his kingdom. They were the babes to whom the Father could reveal spiritual things. But the priests and the rulers, the scribes and Pharisees, who claimed to be the depositaries of knowledge, could give no room for the principles of Christianity. Afterward taught by the apostles of Christ, the chain of truth, link after link, was given to those who realized their own ignorance and were willing to learn of the great teacher. Do you think they feared Jesus at all? No. What do you think about the disciples? What kind of fear do you think they had for Jesus? Maybe the fear of displeasing him? Is that possible? When you highly respect somebody, you listen intently, which we know means obey, right? Respect someone's authority. I don't know if you guys are studying the Sabbath school lesson at all, but um, there was something to do with this today. And I did start to speak up, but I didn't have a mic. And I was told that I had to have a mic, but nobody offered me a mic. So I just stayed silent for the rest of the class. No, that was my way of going, right? But think about it. Anyways, <laughs> let's go to um, First Peter. First Peter three. Let's begin at verse 1. And we'll let some of this out because I wasn't able to talk in Sabbath school class. <laughs> Likewise, ye wise, be in, sub be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of their wives, of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with what? Fear. Ooh, there's that word again. Fear. Fear. <laughs> Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of the planting, plating of the hair and of the wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but it let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek, and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this matter, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even, there's one the ladies really love this verse, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with amazement, with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not what? So, prayers can be hindered. Hmm. Christ is the head of the church, right? Amen. And he uses this marriage um, imagery, I'll say, to show the relationship with the church, right? He's the head, she's the bride, right? And we can't even get the relationships we have with our children and our husbands and wives right. Because, wait a minute, I want to be the head. No, you do it. That, well, if you do that, then I'll, then I'll do this. Isn't it the way it is? Say you have, you say you have, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
So say you have a man that's weak, right? I wouldn't consider myself that, but there are men that are weak. Um, and the woman is strong, okay? So she just leads him around. 